Merry Christmas. Welcome home to Trinity, a place of sharing the gospel and growing God's family. And if, if you're visiting with us today, we hope that already you feel at home here at Trinity. Today is a candlelight service, and you probably already noticed the candles that are in the pews in front of you. We won't need those till the very end of the service, but just some, some brief directions regarding them. There should be about eight candles in each row in each pew, so if you need to share or pass them on down so everyone can have one, please do that. When it comes time for that, um, the ushers will come by lighting the, the candles of those on the, the end of the aisles, and then if you have a lit candle, always keep it upright, and then the person next to them, you dip yours to light yours. But once yours is lit, keep it upright. That way the, the wax doesn't fall on you or on the floor, but in the cup. Um, also, obviously, parents, if uh, your children are going to be using the candles, just help them and uh, be careful with that. At the end of the service, once the candles are all lit and everything, we will sing Silent Night. Now, maybe you know this, maybe you didn't. This is actually the 200th anniversary of Silent Night. It was written 200 years ago, 1818. If you want some of the history of it, the uh, very last page of the service folder gives you a little of the history of the hymn. The entire order of worship, order of service, is printed in the, the handout, so if you don't have one of these, be sure to get one from an usher. Um, the words and of all the songs and everything are in here. The, the one thing that's not in here is if you like to read music, you like to sing harmony, the music's not here. But the hymn numbers are in the service folder. So if you want to look up the music, you can uh, look up the number in the red hymnal that's in the pew in front of you. Our first song for tonight is maybe one that's not as familiar. The people that in darkness sat. And that's why the first verse of this hymn will be sung by the choir. May God bless you as you worship the Christ child this evening.
stand. Let's join together in the response of call to worship. I'll read the, the regular print lines and you responding with the bold lines. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The people, walking in darkness, have seen a great light. The light shines in darkness, but the darkness has not understood. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. To us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And we pray. O loving God, you once caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Turn our th thoughts toward Bethlehem and the Christ child. May the words of scripture we hear tonight remind us again that the old story is ever so new. May the carols we sing tonight reveal to us again the mystery of his birth. May the candles we see tonight symbolize for us your Son as the light of the world. May all who have known that light on earth come to the full measure of its joys in heaven. Please be seated. So why are we here? Why do we um, celebrate Christmas? Well, really what we're doing when we celebrate Christmas is we're celebrating a birthday. Yeah, you know, think of a, a birthday celebration, especially for a little child. Um, you get family and friends together, there's decorations, there's special food, there's maybe some singing. And it's a gathering of, of your closest friends and family. Uh, certainly not a, a city-wide celebration, nor a world-wide celebration. And yet, that's exactly what Christmas is. is a worldwide birthday celebration. We are here because long ago, God had promised that a child would be born, the light of the world, who would come into this world so that that light, Jesus, would scatter the darkness of this world. Long ago, the darkness of sin came into God's perfect world. It happened when the devil, disguised as a snake, tempted Adam and Eve to disobey God, and they gave in. And as a result, darkness came. The darkness of pain, the darkness of disease, the darkness of suffering and struggle, the darkness of death, the darkness of everything that's bad. But God didn't let Adam and Eve wallow in their dark despair. He gave them a glimmer of hope. He gave them a glimpse that the light would come and scatter the darkness. Listen to this record of, of the darkness coming, but then also God's first promise of a Savior. This is from Genesis chapter 3. Uh, the first five verses are printed in your service folder, but there are more verses that I'll read. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, or you must not touch it, or you will die. You'll not surely die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. 
Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they, they hid from the Lord God among the trees in the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, Cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. That was the light that God promised. And of course, he came. Come, Lord Jesus.
you're going to enjoy um, candlelight dinner at home or just sit around and have some candles glowing in the room, you, you just can't sit there expecting it to happen on its own. You have to get things ready. Uh, if you're going to have candles, you, you need candles. So you get a candle, you, you get a, a holder, maybe uh, something to light it with. And um, probably if you're smart, make sure there's nothing nearby that can get caught. You, you have to get ready for it. You have to prepare for it. With the light of the world, Jesus, God got things ready also. He prepared things. And over the centuries, little by little, He, he prepared His people, giving them little information about this coming birth. Um, that this child would be born in Bethlehem, although he would grow up in a different town, in Nazareth. He would be born in, in the family of, of David, born somehow a, of a virgin. And he would bring peace and, and to the world, and, and by his wounds, many would be healed. Eventually, Almost all the preparations had been made. Not much was left to do. One last thing to do was simply to tell the people involved. A reading from Luke chapter 1. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin... Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of... The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. This is the word of our Lord.
once you have everything prepared for candlelight dinner or whatever, it um, does no good if you just leave the candle there and don't light it. No warmth, no light. Not until you light it. Well, everything had been prepared for Jesus' birth. And so now, after all these centuries, after all those promises, now, the light of the world was born. And He made His dwelling among people. A reading from Luke chapter 2. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So, Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in, in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. This is the word of our Lord.
As a familiar children's song goes, if you have a light, you you don't want to hide it under something. No. You want to share it. You want to enjoy it. You want to look at the beauty. And and certainly, a candle is pretty, but think of a a fire pit fire or fireplace. That is something you don't want to just have for yourself. That's certainly not what God wanted with the light of the world. He wanted others to to see it, to enjoy it. And now, of course, marrying Joseph, they had it. But God wanted others to see that light, Jesus, that came into the world. Uh, God's first choice of someone else probably would not have been our first choice. Shepherds. Um, Not the the best-dressed group, not the best smelling group of people, maybe not the best behaved either. And yet these lowly shepherds were the ones that God let see that, that light that had come. A reading from Luke chapter 2. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. Today I I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, And lying in a manger, suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. This is the word of our Lord.
Eventually there comes a time for a candle when uh, either it goes down too low or you just have to leave, yet you have to blow it out. The time did come for the light of the world, Jesus, to be extinguished. But it was a rather short time. He did not live to a ripe old age. After only three years of public ministry, three years of teaching and healing and and sharing the, the news of salvation. It was only then, after three short years of public ministry, the light was extinguished. When Jesus was only eight days old, his parents took him to the temple, and a man named Simeon forewarned Mary of her son's destiny. This is what it says. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. And a sword will pierce your own soul too. The light had come into the world, to redeem the world. But in order to do that, in order to destroy the darkness of sin, the light itself had to be extinguished. Nails would pierce his hands and feet. His back reduced to strips of flesh because of the whipping a crown of thorns adorning his head. Scripture tells us that as Jesus was hanging on the cross to pay for the darkness of our sins, darkness came over the land. It's no wonder. Because the light of the world was being extinguished.
Of course, we know that death could not keep its hold on Jesus. Jesus, the light of the world, rose triumphantly from the grave. He, his light shined all the brighter. You know, light changes things. Very obviously, you turn light on, it, it changes what the room looks like. I, I don't know what it is about our bedroom, but the lighting in my bedroom is such that um, I think I'm wearing black pants. And then I go out in different lighting, and nope, they're green. Or they're blue. You can get rings or, or jewelry that has certain stones that change their color depending on the light. Light changes things. How very true when talking about the light, Jesus. He changes things. He gives hope in the darkness of our lives. He, he gives confidence that our loved ones will rise from the dead just as Jesus rose from the dead. He gives us purpose in our lives. Seeing the light of the world changes lives. And that was certainly true for the shepherds. Look what it says in Luke 2. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen which were just as they had been told. Now tonight we're going to see a very visual reminder of exactly what the shepherds did. And also what God wants us to do. Tonight, as we light our candles in a few minutes, we're going to light it from the center candle here in the wreath. That, that center candle is called the Christ candle. And so we light candles from that, and, and then that light is, is used to, to light someone else from one person to another to another. And we will visually see exactly what God wants us to do. Share that light with others, just like the shepherds did. To, to, to share the light of Jesus at home with, with your spouse, with your children, with, with your grandchildren. To share it with, with your neighbor, the, the person down the road. And hey, maybe you're here tonight because someone did that with you. Let us all share the light of the world with, with the words we use, with with our offerings, with our actions, with our attitudes. At all times, share that light. Amen.
At this time, we will honor and glorify the Christ child with our offerings. If, if you're visiting with us today, please don't feel that you have to be, that you're obligated to put something into the offering plate. You're more than welcome to if you want, but, but don't feel obligated. We do ask, though, please, everyone get one of those uh, green cards that are in the, the pew rack in front of you and, and fill them out. Um, hand them toward the center aisle then, and the ushers will gather those cards after they've gathered the offering. at the part of the service for the candle lighting. So just a few reminders. Of course, you can get out the candles now, and if you need to pass them around or share them in the pew, please do that. Um, when it's at the right time, the ushers will come up and light their candles, and then they'll come by and to those on the ends and light your candles. Now remember, if your candle is lit, you keep it upright. If you're lighting your candle, you dip it so you can light it. But once it is lit, keep it upright so that the wax stays in the cup. Um, of course, parents help the children. Uh, once all the candles are lit, we will um, say the Lord's Prayer. It is in the service folder. It will also be up on the screens. And again, just be careful. You have live fire in your hand. Um, 
And then after the blessing, we will sing for the 200th anniversary, Silent Night. Let's join together in this responsive candle lighting. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. To all who received him, to those who believed in his name, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We light our candles. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.
Good evening, and thank you all for coming to our candlelight service this evening. Um, just a reminder, if you can, obviously once the candles are extinguished, put them back where you found them so that the next service can uh, have them and then the service after that. As you leave, there are going to be some goodie bags for children filled with candy and all sorts of fun stuff. Um, there are a few bags that do not have peanuts in them, so if you need that, please let an usher know and they'll get you one of those bags. Um, also, if you're not going to be, um, if you don't want to take the worship folders home, you can just uh, return them to an usher or put them on, on the, one of the chairs in the back there. And as you leave, the ushers will come up and usher you out. And if you do not have a church home, we would love for you to, to make us your home. Uh, we have a, a Christmas Day service tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning, and normal Sunday services are at 8, 9.30, and 11 o'clock in the morning. Have a blessed evening and a Merry Christmas. <laughs>